The best tablet for your needs can be tricky to find, regardless of whether you're looking to outfit the kids with cheap, durable tablets for school or just want a beautiful iPad to keep near the couch. That's because there are so many tablets with different prices and features these days, which is why we maintain this regularly updated list of the best tablets around, based on our hands-on testing. We can help you find the right tablet because we review the best from all the major manufacturers every year. We test them in our lab and in the real world, and we've come to a few key conclusions about the best tablets out there. Amazon tablets are generally great for kids and anyone on a tight budget, for example, while Apple's iPads are best for students and creative pros. That's especially true now that an M2 chip powers Apple's latest iPad Air, while the powerhouse M4 chip drives the latest iPad Pro. While most tablets are fine for browsing the web, reading books, or watching movies, Apple's new iPads are so powerful they can almost replace your laptop. We have listed the top five best budget tablets 2024, and their key features you need to consider this to help you choose the best one for you. For more information on the product, as always, I've included a link in the description box down below, which are updated with the best prices on each product. Like the video, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Be sure to stay tuned till the end so you don't miss anything. Now let's get started. Number five, Lenovo Tab M10 Plus, third gen. Not long ago, if someone asked for a 10 inch tablet recommendation under $200, I would have told them without hesitation to get an Amazon Fire 10 HD. It had the best mix of value, performance, and display quality in the category. Sure, they'd have to install the Play Store manually, but similarly priced Android competitors couldn't compete on functionality alone. The Lenovo Tab M10 Plus changes that. Its stellar combination of an excellent display and smooth performance proves that sometimes you really can have your cake and eat it too. The Lenovo Tab M10 Plus is available through Lenovo's site and Amazon starting at $150. The base configuration comes with 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage, with configurations available up to 4GB and 128GB, respectively. I recommend spending the extra cash for the 4GB version. The extra RAM helps Android run smoothly, at a minimal additional expense. The Lenovo Tab M10 Plus's premium build quality is apparent when you pick it up. It's primarily made of metal, but a portion of the back is soft-touch plastic, allowing for signal reception. The area covered by soft-touch plastic also extends out to the frame. At 465G, just over one pound, the M10 Plus isn't too heavy to hold but feels rigid and well-built, adding to the premium feel. The chassis' excellent build quality doesn't carry over to the buttons. The power and volume buttons are covered by the same plastic as a portion of the frame. The result is a mushy experience where you never know if you've pressed the button. Aside from the buttons, I'm happy with the design. Lenovo claims its speakers are Dolby Atmos tuned, which are reasonably loud and produce rich sound. Number four, OnePlus Pad Go. As an everyday device for keeping entertained and doing light work, the OnePlus Pad Go fits the bill pretty well, competing admirably with premium Android tablets and Apple's iPad, but at a fraction of their price. If you don't need limitless power and can live without an OLED screen, the Pad Go is a worthy contender to fill the tablet-shaped hole in your life. It even comes close to making the more expensive OnePlus Pad redundant. The smaller sibling of the OnePlus Pad, the OnePlus Pad Go continues the brand's tradition of making budget mobile devices to take on the higher-priced giants in the space. Despite the relatively low asking price, the OnePlus Pad Go still looks like a premium product. It's light and slender, although a few design flaws undermine the experience in the hand. Chief among these is the placement of the camera at the center of the long edge which is simply asking to be smothered by your fingers every time you grasp it. The build quality doesn't seem to be up to quite the same standard of more premium tablets either, as I did notice small imperfections in the construction of my test model. The 11.35 inch 2.4K display is crisp and conveys colors with brilliant vibrancy and the 6090Hz adaptive refresh rate offers a smooth, seamless experience. Despite this, it is overshadowed, literally, by its high reflectivity. Dark hues essentially turn the Pad Go into a glorified mirror, so you'll struggle to see much of anything in dimly lit scenes. When it comes to actually using the Pad Go, OnePlus's Android-based system, Oxygen OS, performs well. It ran smoothly during most of my time with it, but I did have a few issues, including the incongruous way you manage app windows and the inconsistent functionality of the face unlock and auto-rotate features. Those points aside, it was refreshing to be presented with a minimalist Android interface that was as easy to use as that on many of the best tablets. Number three, T-Class, T40S. Where once the big brands reigned supreme with simple e-readers, 
Things quickly changed with the likes of the Kindle evolving to take on more, with off-brand slabs soon using Amazon's platform to take the spot of existing brands. The Teclas T40 is a 10.4-inch budget tablet that takes concessions in all the right places to deliver a tablet that, rather than looking the best, performs admirably in areas you wouldn't normally expect a budget tablet to hold steady. It's far from the most attractive and professional option, and a tech-savvy person won't be convinced by its generic looks, but it'll do almost anything you'd expect from a low-end tablet better than almost anything else out there for its price. With a $40 coupon available at the time of writing that knocks this one down to a measly $120, it's one to seriously consider lapping up for parents, younger kids, or even as a spare device to keep on your bedside table. You'll want something more premium if you care about your smart devices, but for those who don't sweat the details, it's a great option. It doesn't sport any kind of eye-catching shape or semi-artsy details. There's no lightly textured feature strip at the top like with the Oppo Pad Air or Lenovo Tab M10 Plus 3rd Gen, but there's a thin strip caressing the long side of the rear panel that you could pass off as a feature detail had it been colored to contrast the rest of the glittering backside. The camera might be mistaken for two. Housed in a raised black bump like a modern smartphone, the two lenses aren't actually two cameras, but one camera and a large flash module. Number two, iPad 10. I wish life could be simple, but Apple's new iPad lineup is showing that it's not always the case. For the last few years, Apple would have just one model called the iPad back in the day. But now with the new iPad for 2022, offered alongside last year's 9th generation iPad, picking which one to buy has become a strangely entangled process. Somewhere between every single model Apple offers is the perfect iPad, but it doesn't currently exist in one single product. That's why I, as your reviewer guide, am having such a hard time with the review for Apple's brand new, redesigned 10th gen iPad. Starting at $449, $499, A749, it should be the iPad for everyone. But from what I've seen so far, it's not even if it's better in many ways from the previous version. Maybe Apple already knows this, because the iPad lineup has six variants. 2022's base model, last year's 9th gen iPad, the iPad mini, the step-up iPad Air, and the luxury iPad Pro, which comes in two sizes. So which is the best one, you ask? Stop talking about confusion, Scott, and help me. This newly redesigned iPad nearly has it all. It has USB-C, finally. It has a bigger screen and better speakers, like the iPad Air. It's the first iPad to move its camera to the horizontal edge for better FaceTime and Zoom calls. Then there are the downsides. If you want to use an Apple Pencil with this iPad, you have to use the first gen one, which means using a weird USB-C dongle. It doesn't work with iPad case accessories made for any other model, meaning you'll have to buy new accessories. And the price has gone up. It's $440 for the version with only 64 GB of storage, but you'll likely want the step-up model with more storage, 256 GB for $590. And with any sort of case or Apple Care, you're probably looking at well over $700. I haven't even factored in a pencil or Apple's new $250 Magic Keyboard Folio case. Number 1. Honor Pad X9 There is nothing particularly standout about the design of the Pad X9, but it does both look and feel very premium. The anodized aluminum body is not something you see too commonly in this budget price segment. The Honor Pad X9 seems to only come in one color, space gray. Matte as it may be, the back panel still picks up fingerprints. The Honor Pad X9 is pretty thin at 6.9mm. The weight is quite reasonable as well at 495 grams given the 11.5 inch display size and 7250mAh battery. That being said, the Pad X9 is still a hefty device and holding it with one hand is only feasible for short periods of time. The reasonably sized bezels strike a good balance between offering enough area to grab onto, all without making the design look dated. As already mentioned, the Pad X9 has quite a premium bill of materials for its price tag. Both its middle frame and back panel are made of aluminum. There is some protective glass covering the display, which offers some peace of mind. However, Honor does not specify exactly what kind of glass it is. Also, in case you were wondering, there is no formal ingress protection rating. The Honor Pad X9 has a pretty standard set of controls. Well, unless you count the six speakers set up with two speakers on each of the short sides and two more speakers on the bottom of the tablet when you are holding it horizontally. These two speakers in particular are meant to bounce sound from a surface you've placed the slate on, creating a 360 degree effect. The opposite side of the Pad X9 houses a volume rocker and power button. These are positioned a bit high up on the frame, but there is no truly comfortable location to place these on a tablet. The buttons are nice and clicky, with good tactile feedback. 